This is the Fellowship of the Link for Wednesday, May 3rd, 2023. Um, and Pete participated in something over the weekend that I wanted to, but I just, I opened the hood, looked inside, and I was like, I can't do this. My brain's not going to handle it. Um, it was, what was it like? It was Complexity Adventures, right? Yeah, it's it's really interesting, actually. Um, uh, it's a little bit like OGM or the Meta Project or, you know, one of these kind of, I don't know, uh, cluster, uh, I don't know, fuzzy organization, a fuzzy organization. They're actually a little bit less fuzzy than, than OGM. Yeah. Um, but uh, it came out of complexity science, and there were people getting together, I think, every month. And then the pandemic happened, and they couldn't get together, and then they figured out they could get together virtually, and then it snowballed from there, actually. Uh, it used to be called Complexity Weekend, and now it's called Complexity Adventures. Um, and twice a year, they have uh, what they call a summit, uh, like the top of a mountain, um, where it's a 48-hour unconference, basically, 24-7 um, uh, around the world. Uh, so wherever you are in the world, you know, somebody would be awake and hanging out with you. They, um, they I already it. want to go. <laughs> it's, it's super fun. Uh, <laughs> they, uh, they hold it in Gathertown, um, mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. and that works pretty well. So Gathertown, um, you, it looks like a old yeah, school it. adventure map, mm -hmm. and you drive your your bot around to, or your your avatar. You drive your avatar around to a room, and you cluster next yeah. to people. I've been to a different uh, conference there. It works quite all right. Yeah. I I've uh, Dweb SF uses Gathertown too, and I've mm -hmm. always been a little bit shy, I guess, or something like that. So I always never quite got it, but it actually worked this weekend where. After session, the person who had invited me dropped by, and you know we were chatting, and and I was, and then he he introduced me to somebody else who was standing close to us, and and so then I was going on about exciting stuff, and um, a couple other people came by, just like a regular cocktail party. So it, the the interface actually worked and did its thing. <clears throat> um, so they have uh, what they call guides, and guides uh, sponsor a unconference room. They run uh, sessions for a session. Actually, I think they only have one session. They, they, they run a session, and then it's an hour break. Session for an hour, break for an hour, session for an hour, break for an hour, for 20, 48 hours at least. A um, couple really strong people convening the whole thing. Uh, and right now, they have about a third new people every summit. So then they have what they call base camps uh, every month after that for the teams that have formed and have been continuing to get together and you know work and whatever. So um, super super fun, good group of folks. Uh, it's it's a little bit so again maybe compare it a little bit to OGM. Um, it's a little bit. It has a little bit more focus because they've got this complexity science through line. Um, you know, they've got a, a place they came from, kind of, which I guess our place, the OGM place, is something like thinking tools or mm -hmm. tools for thought or, you know, hyper, hypertext, hypergraphs. I don't know. Um, but theirs is a little bit more structured. And, and so then they have a little bit more shared language amongst each other and, you know. Um, they uh, another interesting thing they're doing. Uh, they run everything in Keybase. So instead of Mattermost or right. Discord, mm -hmm. uh, they have Keybase. Um, and I did not know that Keybase has like groups and teams and whatever and uh, channels. So there's <clears throat> they have a. I'm on the team now, the Complexity Adventures team, and they have a bunch of channels like it's in Mattermost or Discord. I think that's one of the other things that discouraged me was in the run-up. They said, hey, if you've got Keybase, <laughs> sign into our Keybase. And I'm like, I think I uninstalled that a long time ago, and I'm just not up for the wrestling with another platform. Yeah. Between Gather and Keybase, I was like, oh, oh, oh. yeah, yeah. It reminds me of like, you know, Jimmy Zawinski yeah. had this old yeah. dictum about like every app, I think he was in, every app grows until it can send email. Yes. Well, <laughs> chat is the same for like uh, the current age, yeah. no? Yeah. yeah. Jimmy Zawinski is uh, one of the, the his, his rants are the ones that I like the best. Yeah. Um, yes. he's, he's got an amazing rant on, um, 
on the Mork uh, data format for the old, the old, 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 the original Mozilla mm -hmm. um, export format for all of its data was in this thing called Mork. And it, it's just a joy to read his, I, I think actually the rant is, is not just a text rant. It's actually, he wrote the Perl code or something um, to untangle this thing. And just the comments are just sterling. One of my favorite reads. That's Arabic. Yeah, I really like it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. And, uh, and to the point, um, yeah. very, you know, he's has, he's very observational and, and has a very, so, so then Steve Yegi is another one like that and just yes. a joy to read every time. <laughs> Steve Yegi, maybe the reason I work at Google. Yeah. I essentially, yeah, one of the reasons, I mean, but, you know, essentially because of the original, like, articles on Google, you know, yeah, yeah. And then his rant on Amazon Cloud versus yeah. Google. Uh, That's a classic. Google Platforms rant, yeah. Yep. Yes, still true today. Yeah. <laughs> <Just, Yep. laughs> yeah, anyway. Um, so uh, I will be speaking to the, the person who hosted me, kind of uh, Michael Lennon, later today. Um, and we'll do a quick credit for Plex. So. There'll be a few more pointers and, and screenshots and stuff from Complexity Adventure. Nice. Thanks for asking, Jay. Um, and thanks for the great um, explanation. That was really super. Um, the funny thing is, I, I didn't really talk about the uh, any of the sessions or you know. Yeah, I, and my first question, or... my first question was going to be to you: Are there any uh, the monthly meeting for? Uh, uh, formats that appeal to you that you think you'll sort of go to that that sounded like they were up up your alley. I uh, I I actually don't know how the monthly meetings work, and I don't know, and 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 I don't know how they. So they've got a little bit more delineated, maybe is the the way that they've 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 got a little bit sharper sense of the teams. Um, you know, they charter, they they do a pretty good job of helping teams convene themselves during the summit um, a, a little bit sharper than OGM does. And so OGM has teams, you know, um, Fellowship of the Link or, or uh, Marley or, you know, some of the related things like Massive Wiki or something like that. But they, they put more work into kind of maintaining or fostering, maybe is a better way to say it, fostering teams. <clears throat> I, I had originally had the sense that they, they have more people than just, just there's kind of more people in the orbit than OGM. And I'm not sure if that's true or not. Mm -hmm. I think they are a little bit bigger, but. <clears throat> cool. Um, thank you. Uh, part of what I was reporting in before that was that I'm in another conversation where Building a shared memory and massive wiki kind of things would make some sense, but I don't know if they make entire sense. But they're, they're, like this is in the air. It's like there's a, a bunch of um, a bunch of places where we need to sort out how to know what we know. Um, I've got kind of related to that. Um, I've got two. Um, you know, the, actually another funny thing about the, the weekend, um, I don't know if this is everybody or just Michael, um, but, um, but he was, he, he talked a lot about the mycelial networks, you know, within, and within complexity to venture and then spreading out from complexity to venture. So, um, but anyway, in another set of mycelial networks, uh, one of them is Lionsburg, and then another one is uh, David Bovel's David Bovel and Modi, um, their map of the future. Um, they're both talking about um, organizational structure, um, and um, uh, it's it's something that I uh, it and I guess it's funny. There was. Um, there was some point at which uh, Complexity Adventure was was saying, you know, hey, all this stuff is free and, and we love to do it. And by the way, um, we're getting to the point of being a 501c3 and, and um, you know, your text or your donations aren't tax deductible yet, but they will be at some point. And 
I was like, oh man, you know, if they could hook up with Lionsburg, which has got uh, a bunch of the 501c3 um, infrastructure already built. <clears throat> Mm. Lots of lots of uh, people working on organizational structure. And um... apropos that, I spoke yesterday for the first time with Hank Holiday um, of Quorum One, and I posted here his post. What is for Quorum One? And remarkably, and not remarkably, it's another organization that's on a quest to figure out what are the new governance mechanisms. How do we reinvent democracy? No capitalism. No both. Oh, I don't know. Um, and he's he runs really deep. We had a really nice. We only had a half hour slot. Uh, we're going to talk again. It might make sense for more of us to get involved if you're interested. Uh, but he's well along on this quest and has sort of some running code and, and things like that. And I'm just genuinely interested in all the different communities that have this quest in mind and some running code, right. uh, not to create one ring to rule them all, but rather to figure out what works from each of them and how do we share and, and blend? How do we create some interoperability without a hegemony? Uh, all of the above, which probably is what the Fediverse and indie webs are busy trying to do right. also, right? And those are two of the communities that would be obvious candidates to go talk to. Right. And it seems very interesting. I mean, this very much to the point also, like uh, from the some discussions I've, uh, I'm having this week precisely and also past week for me, uh, for uh, Social Co-op, you know, part of the community working group, and there's this recurring, like uh, on different levels, right? Uh, there's like the, essentially the, you know, federated fed cooperatives approach, uh, which currently is not very widely um, uh, in use in the Fediverse, even though the Fediverse itself is federated, of course, by nature, the actual work that goes towards making it work <laughs> is not. Hmm. So every instance is like a, a, a very base co uh, cooper co cooperatively, um, uh, you know, manage, like social co-op, you know, in that sense, we are doing quite well. Uh, many are like individuals, but even the cooperatives are not sharing too much. And the same, uh, and this has been coming up as, you know, can we share c sounding work? Can we share like, uh, a, you know, setup? Can we share like maybe, maybe moderation? Uh, to some extent, it's like the governance, uh, the same governance aspect uh, for both instances and the network. And this, and I, I, I have a conversation later this week, and I had one uh, last Thursday uh, about Meet Coop. You know, Meet.coop. Yeah. Right. So Meet.coop is like a, you know, it emerges like a, also like a take on, you know, how to cooperatively run Big Blue Button precisely, which we're discussing. It's a, it's a fork of Big Blue Button, right? It's a, essentially it's like an like an installation of Big Blue Button. Uh, yep. It's just running. Uh, Pretty much pretty vanilla, I think. Um, but you know, um, it may have some modifications. I don't know. It's been it was set up, and then you know, like the idea was like cooperatives will become um, uh, members, and uh, they will contribute towards the upkeep. But then the, the the issue of the you know every cooperative needs to have like a sysadmin team essentially, uh, like on staff, uh, on call ideally as well if you provide a service. Um, it, it, it came up again and it's, it was about to be disbanded actually because you know they, they didn't feel they had enough like momentum to like actually make that work or interest and now there's like we are discussing can we have like a federated hosting or like where, where the cooperatives or like federated hosting or federated like even like a season mean where the cooperatives that take um, a part actually contribute part also this work directly so like yeah like some sort of like a a federation of war precisely um so so in, uh, going back to the original problem no it's like uh, all these uh, organizations trying to solve like governance finding tools even like just sharing knowledge about the tools they use all the coordination uh work um uh, if we could do it on top of some federated uh hypothesis you know if we could do some kind of federated uh, or the distributed uh, a platform or protocol um then maybe uh, it will have like the right traits, right? To bootstrap some uh, something like this. Very uh, interesting. And I guess we also go back to the, the just the problem of gathering the data, indexing, making the connections, uh, and to some extent how this all seems to. Uh, am I correct in thinking like this works because people know each other and then they introduce each other to the right people? And uh, is is there some Organize, uh, uh, is there some organization that does the connect, connection of uh, at this level from for projects that you see, you know, are in this space, 
or does it happen only, you know, people person to person? Um, I mean, at some level, LinkedIn offers suggestions for people to connect to with mm -hmm. algorithms that is trying to figure out who you might want to connect with because they know that the richer their graph, the better. So there's, mm -hmm. and that's, that's kind of casual. Fencing, could you ask that again? Yeah, sorry. Important. Yeah, yeah. So I guess, like, you know, like, I, uh, this is uh, an meta level. Like, I come to this meeting, uh, which I love. <laughs> yeah, I was saying, and I learn something uh, interesting every week. I learn about, like, organizations. You know, we keep bringing up, I think, collectively as a group, just different organizations which are, like, trying to solve the same problems. But we are doing, it seems like it's all based on the legwork of individuals. Like, you know, you, Peter, learned about this conference and went. And, like, uh, Jerry is, like, a nexus and knows, like, you know, a lot of people approached and so on. And we are doing this like peer to peer, right? Is there some so is there some how or, or platform or organization? Is there some higher level effort we're missing, like a repository of projects in this space, so on, right? That uh, that that we know of. It's a it's a uh, th thanks thanks for going over it again. This is one of the it's a conundrum that I I kind of wonder about. If I don't distract myself, it also reminds me of a question that came up and I was about to uh, answer it and we, we got distracted over the weekend, actually, Complexity Adventure weekend. Um, somebody was saying, how could we how could we merge knowledge bases or something like that? Mm -hmm. And and the, the kind of the answer I wanted to give that, that thing about knowledge bases is I don't I, I have a hard, it's hard for me to, knowledge bases, I don't, I think don't work. Um, like you can't transmit knowledge, uh, like, um, or you, you mm. can't, I guess the question was something about, you know, an organization has a knowledge base, this other organization has a knowledge base. We could like merge them together. And I'm like, you know, it doesn't work mm. that way. Yeah. Um, and just the fact that it's written down doesn't make it, knowledge uh you actually you you to unserialize the knowledge and the knowledge base you need somebody who knows the context of it and they'll help you find the right page they'll you know tell you read this page and then you and then you know whoever reads it will go well i don't get it can you give me an example or something like that and like knowledge to me also seems like kind of the same thing that you just asked about it's like we think we can kind of bottle it, but in practice, it doesn't work that way. It's it's person by person and conversation by conversation that you kind of relate things. And going through that answer in my head later, I think I'll get to talk to that same person again and, and bring this back up. But um, there there is a, a kind of knowledge that that each of us uses all the time. Um, the, the example that probably is familiar to almost all of us, maybe not Jerry so much, but you know, it's like you go to Stack Overflow, you need to know, you know, what the syntax is for this Git command, or you need whatever, whatever, right? And it's like that's actually a kind of knowledge that you can um, you can actually access, you know, without relate without without much relationship to. Um, the, the person who asked it seven years ago and the person who answered it five years ago and the, the commenters, you know, like, I don't know any of those people, but there's enough context for me. And I guess the, the question is small enough that I can actually go mine and a knowledge base. So I don't know how to resolve There is a coordination point, right? Because like uh, most people use, this a coordination pro point in this case, because Stack Overflow yeah. is a product. Like, well, yeah, and, yeah. you know, and I'm talking particularly about Git and I'm talking about the syntax of a particular Git yeah. use case and like, you know, over time, you know, 20 different people have run into that same thing and they keep upvoting the same thing. And, and so it works like that. Um, now with ChatGPT, ChatGPT kind of like layers right. on top of that, another, another easy to use interface that's conversational now. That's great. Um, to, to kind of come back to your question a little bit, Flancy, and, um, one of the folks that we know really well is Vincent Arena, and he's got Catalyst.network, and it's exactly what you described, right? What is um, it? That name? Uh, I'll type it. Thank you. Unless Jerry beats me to it. I think you're going to beat me to it. I'm going to Vincent, and I'm never sure which is the most recent, the proper URL. Um, 
Vincent Doreen. Uh, Vincent's been building this database for probably a couple of years now, um, and it's it's pretty thorough. And Vincent is a genius at uh, database schemas. Um, uh, so he does a lot of work making the different elements of the the data. So it's it's a way to track. Um, people and projects and organizations around the, you know, roughly around social good. Um, he's been a genius at kind of relating them in, in novel ways and then being able to present them in novel ways. So one of the things he did was like, you know, after at some point he said, oh, and you can look at it, you know, through the lens of SDGs, you can look at it through the lens of spiral dynamics, you can look at it through the lens of yada, 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 right? All these different frameworks. Nice. And I'm like, hey, that's cool. Um, oh, so the, uh, Vincent and I are, uh, uh, main folks in something called Flotilla. Um, Flotilla yeah. was a community yeah. interest kind of the, and it, we're, we're dipping down right now and we're going to reconstitute and re reform a little bit and reschedule, especially, um, our Friday calls are going to not be on at the same time anymore. But, but anyway, so I, I've kind of watched Vincent continuing to develop this and we theorize how to make it interoperable with other things. And, um, it's just, I, the, the, there's a, what my, my hypothesis with Vincent, my hypothesis for Vincent has always been, um, I, Vincent, I think, is hoping to build something that can be used by anybody. And my observation is that a rich directory like that is something that is actually not um, user friendly. It's not. Um, it's not something you can come up on and just use. People don't know what they're looking for, how to describe it the, the way they want to. Maybe in you know maybe in a year when he's integrated ChatGPT, I could say something like. Hey, I'm looking for uh, regenerative agriculture stuff, and I'm based in Florida, and I'm interested, especially in growing watermelons or, you know, pollinators or something like that. And and maybe ChatGPT can kind of answer that. Most muggles, um, lay people, when they go to a, a complicated directory, they don't know how to do filters and sorts and facets and all that kind of stuff that mm -hmm. you know us data database folks love to do. So my, my hypothesis for something like Catalyst has always been that there's a layer of specialists around it. Um, the generic term I use for those kinds of people is matchmakers. But matchmakers in this case would, would understand the database pretty well. They know what's in there, know how to look for it. Then librarians are also matchmakers, right? Librarians in the old school sense. You go to a librarian and you tell them, uh, I live in Florida. I'm interested in pollinators and watermelon, and uh, I'm trying to figure out, you know, uh, and and you don't even know to, to say regenerative agriculture, but the librarian says, "Oh, I know what you're looking for. Here's the terminology. Here are the databases you can look at. Here are the directories you can open up and flip to the right page, and and so on and so forth." So, it's it's tempting to think, especially for us database people, that you can just mount a database up in the web and make it sortable and searchable and blah blah. blah. Nobody can use it. No, no no real people can use it. The real people need to talk to a specialist that talks to the database. Mm -hmm. And then, if that's the case, you you kind of want a guild of of librarians or a guild of matchmakers where one matchmaker says huh, I know all about regenerative agriculture and I can get whatever I want to out of this. This person is asking about uh, space technology and rocket ships and stuff like that. I have no clue where to look. I know the database has it. I don't really know how to look. So that the that match, matchmaker can reach out across the matchmaker guild and find wow. a specialist who knows all about that subject matter, right? So kind of the same thing, I kind of, there's another to, to another kind of facet to your, the answer to your question. I I actually know of organizations that are very close to what I'm interested in. Um, Collaborative Tech Alliance is one of them, and I I know Collaborative Tech Alliance through somebody in Flotilla. Um, Michael Grossman and Vincent know Collaborative Tech Alliance pretty well. Um, I, Collaborative what? Collaborative Tech Alliance. CTA. 
Um, I know the folks pretty well. I've been to their, you know, their collaboration platform is Hilo. Um, Hilo is maintained and built by the people doing Collaborative Tech Alliance, so it makes sense. Um, uh, Tibet is one of the one of the conveners at CTA, you know, and Tibet and I wave at each other, <laughs> you know, hi Tibet, you know, hi Pete. Um, every couple months, um, I send them, you know, questions. Uh, every every plex, I send them a, a hey, what's up, Tibet? Tibet, and I'm not complaining at all. Tibet doesn't have time to answer it because he's got too much stuff going on in his his part of the 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 network, right? Um, so CTA and I just have missed each other kind of. And I think that's another thing that happens. You end up falling in with whatever people you'll fall in with. And there's the time zones work right. The tech right, works right. You know, they're using a, a tech that you don't hate um, or mm -hmm. you don't bounce off of like uh, Keybase and, and Coda and, uh, you know, and Gather. It's like, okay, that's that's a stack. <laughs> it's not yeah. the stack I'm used to, and it's not even a stack, stack that I go to once in a while. It's a completely other stack that I have to build up on. Yeah. So would, just, would you, yeah. Go ahead. No, I want to say like with this why uh, uh, well, on just seeing Catalyst Network while you were uh, discussing, it seems to have the right shape in the sense that I believe that the end, the kind of entity that uh, has uh, that, that should emerge, you know, like uh, in this higher level space of like connectivity should be an integrator first so and i see that there's an approach on like integrating like a variety of jazz a variety of tools i think that's i mean my my feeling is that that's completely necessary because if not you will always be uh, just uh, subscribed to like you know this stack problem essentially so uh, in yeah. flotilla we we part of the reason for flotilla was to talk about interoperability um so we haven't done this for a while but um, three of the, the the main flotilla people are Vincent and me and Michael Grossman. Michael Grossman has a a bookmarking platform called Factor, um, F A C T R. Um, it's a great another great platform that you know I should be using and I'm not um, uh, for whatever reason. So a lot of the conversations we had on the flotilla Fridays were about you know how can we interoperate, how can we integrate um what would what would catalyst uh publish and consume from massive wiki and what would massive wiki publish and consume from factor and what would factor publish and consume from right and i think that, that's know, a great framing for a special discussion which is like just interop i think like mm -hmm. like a market uh, on the interop level as in you know like uh, opening channels uh, for consumer provider or whatever uh, for federation essentially you know uh, in other framing the the um i you know it's a it's a tricky problem i what what happens is everybody's um v vincent vincent and i did a, a a number of experiments vincent also grabbed stuff off of mattermost so i'm running a mattermost instance and vincent knows how to how to um get his bot to put stuff into um, Vincent and I are also working on um, uh, Zoom uh, artifacts, recordings, and transcripts. Nice. And like that. Oh, that person. Yeah. Okay. So why isn't Vince here? <laughs> um, I w what I was going to say is, you know, we Vincent and I experiment on that kind of stuff, and yeah. each of us has our own project that consumes like all of our time, right? So right. interop ends up being a second class, third class uh, activity, and so. Going back to just a quick connection to the like uh, work uh, workers commons or the, federation, the work federation, mm -hmm. you could imagine this is the kind of thing where like a you know a community commons first approach for like building this interop mesh, which goes back to, you know like Samuel is not here today, but you know like uh, interlay, you know right uh, the interlay approach. Uh, I mean I, we are it, it tends to happen, and I I talk about um, this with like. Projects in general, like I always ask, oh, do, will you federate? Which format will you interrupt? And the question is always like, oh, we don't have time. I mean, which we don't. I know how it is. So this will be ideal to like we could actually stuff up if we are willing to like they get resources. If everybody chips in to say uh, essentially pay pay someone willing to be specialized on interrupt. 
So essentially, actually, you know, in projects, chip in to say we're gonna stuff up like a, an Intel uh, working group that just manages to inter between all these formats. That will be a probably. My impression is that it will be high um, high value. Uh, maybe it could work. Um, a quick a quick um, insert here. I had a nice conversation mm -hmm. with Ida Josefina, uh, an entrepreneur, and we got to talking about. Wouldn't uh, there was this problem that a lot of startups in the tools for thinking space have, which is that they've already got some code going. They're too tiny for angel investors. Like, like, sorry, they're they're a little too big for angel investors, and they're too small for VCs. So they kind of fall into this weird funding gap because um, they need more money than angels will probably give them. So, so we thought, what if we banded a bunch of them together around the concept of interoperability? And created a fund or a pool that would allocate funds, you know, inside for startups, et cetera, et cetera. It's a little complicated, but but could be really interesting. And then and then um, and then Ida said, so we would just sort of need to pick what are the protocols uh, to merge toward or write toward or whatever the right phrasing is. And I kind of in that conversation said, ah, I, I, that seems like a really hard question to solve right now. And Tell then, me to eat. Uh, yeah. And, and then my next conversation an hour later was with Kyle Shannon, who was on a, on a like contact high from chat GPT and was like, you know, just totally blowing the doors off what you might do and what was going on. And I suddenly realized, oh, crap, it was some good prompt engineering. You could semi solve that problem, at least in, probably in a good enough way with some prompts, with some chat GPT and go, hey, where, what, how would you organize something that where these things could meet? And I'm relatively sure, but not experienced enough to know, that ChatGPT could find a workable solution which presented back to a bunch of companies that were semi-similar semi in, in a space would be like, oh, okay, I could do that. And then maybe form up a pool or a collective or a, I don't know what they call this thing, um, or a DAO or a meh. Um, but that was really interesting. And we kind of left the idea there. Um, but in this, in these weird funding times, that might be a good way to go about doing some of this. And then you get in the larger coordination problems of having multiple entities in a larger pool of funds with multiple priorities. And how does that work out? Yeah. I mean, it's like, um, indie web or tiny web or stuff like that. Right. The idea is there's sort of an ideological core that makes these sites join together in an informal way and then the question becomes could they come together in a formal way that would allow them to raise money as a single unit uh, seems like the way to go it it does make me think a lot about um i mentioned yak read before and the person who runs that has been thinking about going and turning their or their sort of time into a non-profit uh, I've seen a bunch of other folks like um, some of the uh, the Mastodon instances have been looking around that route too, as like a way to become a nonprofit to gather groups together to gain funding to out output the projects. Um, I do I do like the idea of an interop fund where it's like let's build out these things, and the only condition is that whatever your software is, it can talk to these other pieces of software, or at least have its data be consumable by these other pieces of software. I mean, there's a really good argument on the business side that like, there's a bunch of legal requirements that are going to need that to happen in the near future anyway, right? We have data checkout in GDPR, we have data checkout under California law. Right now, data checkout is like a, a null, right? You just get a bunch of CSVs or a bunch of JSONs or a bunch of CSVs and a bunch of JSONs. And that doesn't turn into anything useful for you as a user unless you have somebody who's built some sort of program to, to work with it. So there's a lot of, when, when I've talked to legislatures um, and lawmakers and regulators and that type of stuff, like they recognize this problem and there may be um, like may, there may be an opportunity to think about the interop from that standpoint as well to say, hey, all of these organizations that normally do not get along all have similar data forms. Um, how do we make it so that when they come out of the system, you can take your data and move it into another system really effectively? Because without that capability, data checkout is pointless, really. Right. 
that, that's a very good connection. I think yes, like uh, in, in essence, I mean, of course, like the the um, Inter of Fund, essentially, where it's an, an, an another C, another name for a C for a commons, right? <laughs> it's like it's like it's just like a more like a narrative or like a, a context that could yield that essentially like some alignment with like commercial interests or regulatory interests, like you're saying, that's a very good, nice connection that will increase the chances that, that uh, you know, different entities uh, are enticed to coordinate. Uh, and on top of that, I guess we can, maybe this goes into at least like, you know, uh, uh, saleable points for the commons uh, to some extent. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so we can sell off the commons. Just kidding. <laughs> Go ahead, Kate. Let me, let me, um, uh, I, I've got two things I want to cover, and one of them, they, and, and then they actually contradict a little bit. Um, nice. So let me come back to organizational structure, but let me start with uh, a little bit of skepticism about the interop fund and, mm -hmm. and interop, um, oh, like funding somebody to do the interop stuff. I, like the gut feel for me for that is that the the incentives align wrong for that so um so i i think back to the uh old ietf days in the early 90s when people were building internet protocols and stuff like that and one of the ones that i can think of really clearly is imap um uh, there was a guy paul hoffman who ran the imap interop uh, stuff and I think I think he funded it. I his his work was voluntary. I think, or maybe he got a little bit of funding from from one organization. But the interop that I've seen working and IMAP was a good example of it. Uh, doesn't come from funding an external group that's helping everybody interop. What what worked was each IMAP. Um, uh, software developer company, um, or more back in the day, academic, uh, academic institutions, um, worked on their own interop. So, you know, the, so you would get a, um, you would get a committee together of all the people doing a thing, right? IMAP. Um, and then the committee members would tussle out the next version of IMAP, um, you know, going from two to three or whatever. Um, but each of those committee members was working for, you know, a university or a company, um, and and the you you end up with kind of the incentives in the right place. There was a marketplace incentive. Hey, if we want to be a, an IMAP provider, IMAP player, um, we need to, you know, we need to join up with the the people writing the RFCs for the IMAP. And we have to participate in Paul Hoffman's uh, IMAP interop events. Uh, they had he had regular events every six months or a year, or maybe on a new version or something like that. Um, you'd get everybody literally together in a hotel conference room um, on a big LAN, and everybody would run IMAP clients and servers against each other in a big matrix and find lots of bugs and go home and fix them. Um, the I, I think you need that tension of you know uh so for massive wiki for instance I, I don't, maybe that's a bad example for for um for vincent and catalyst the, the person who can who can build interop for catalyst best is vincent or people on his team right yeah um, i mean it, honestly that makes sense when i said that thing i was like well actually software projects are, I mean, the, the mythical man month could be, be the mythical, uh, you know, <laughs> even worse here, right? Essentially, like uh, developers, uh, like touching code bases they don't own or, yeah. Yeah. Uh, or, maybe or, not even working in a company, let alone in the internet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or we're yeah. working from documentation that doesn't really reflect reality. Yeah, yeah. Like so, so let's think about. I, I think the, the level, things yeah. that used to work in the IETF days was uh, you had um the ietf promulgating standards so you know if you were doing an internet thing you had to you had to and and the standards process was open enough that if you wanted to start a standard um, or join a, a standard that was competing with another standard you could do that um but that 
that central clearinghouse for people doing standards work was super important and whatever incentivized people to participate in making standards was super important. Um, and then uh, Paul Hoffman's Bake Offs were amazing. Um, not not all the um, different protocols and stuff had that kind of thing, but um, the IMAP, IMAP uh, Bake Offs were just amazing, and they were amazingly productive. Having having somebody run an event and have everybody, you know, focusing for on a hackathon essentially before we called them hackathons um, was super productive. So so then how do we fund you know or how do we how do we get the resources to create rather rather you know you still need to interrupt funding but it's for setting up the standards by which everybody plays and incentivizing people and maybe subsidizing developers you know working yeah. on on prem that help an organization um meet up in the middle i mean the the, the other it's, that makes complete sense to me, Peter. Yes, I think that that, that has a little more chance of working. Uh, the other like uh, possible fund, and it's not like we need to like pigeonhole this into the fund aspect, but you know, going back to regu regulatory aspects, or this is something I also uh, at some point I discussed with logsic people and other people. That I was trying to like see if there was interest in like getting different tools of thought into like a commons, right? And one of the and some of the um, uh, the, the arguments for like actually uh, maybe trying to motivate these entities. Uh, uh, one of those was like, well, if you just get data into the repository or in this format, then this and this and this may be solved uh, already for you. For example, like uh, getting that data massage into a format that uh, passes regu regulatory um, regulatory uh, requirements. Yeah. Right? Uh, so essentially, the shared services approach. Yeah. Um, or uh, the the other um, the, uh, just flipping it a bit, it will be uh, maybe you know each tool is providing cloud hosting, right, and charges for it. Maybe they will be interested in providing being able to provide cloud hosting for uh, the backups or the, even the live data for other tools. So essentially, it could we have like a market within the commons, which will be a, a picture for like the commons as a higher level entity than the market which personally we need, but that's a, a larger topic, no? Uh, uh, so I guess the uh, other, uh, I guess the, the topic will be like different um, the ways of uh, uh, providing incentives. Yeah, for so so now let me dig into organization st organizational structure yeah. a little bit. I think one of the, um, it's top of mind for me because I've got two, two groups I'm participating in that are both working on this deeply and their premise is that maybe I, I'm I'm going to I'm going to like riff a little bit and maybe I'll overstate some of the things that they're thinking, but it it kind of makes sense if you extend it a little bit. the The premise is that um, the one of the problems that we have now is um, little groups of people doing good work uh, don't have enough support in creating an organizational structure that people feel like they can contribute and understand the context of their contributions um, and have have some say in the governance of the organization have some um, if if it's if it's not a complete nonprofit um, which is maybe important sometimes um, uh, if it's got some for-profit um, component, how do I make sure that I can contribute to this thing and share in the profits that come out of it, stuff like that. Um, both of these organizations are working on templating that for, for people and making it much smaller energy-wise to, to set up the organization structure uh, to join up in a federation of other organizations um, and uh, participate in in uh, kind of having like uh, templates uh, templates and catalogs of agreements and things like that between organizations. So wouldn't it be cool if Massive Wiki wanted to work with Catalyst and instead of Vincent and I scratching our head or, or asking ChatGPT, how should we organize ourselves? If we could just go to a catalog and say, this is the organizational form for Massive Wiki, 
poof, let's implement that. Uh, this is a, the organizational forum that Catalyst should have. Poof, let's implement that. They're different. Here's the, the templates for agreements between those organizations. Poof, let's do that. So kind of what, what happened with uh, Larry Lessig and, and Creative Commons um, and the other fine folks at Creative Commons, um, Aaron Swartz and all of them, um, they templatized just the copyright thing. What if we had that, you know, like 100x or something, and we were able to plug these small little groups into essentially the, the equivalent of what much bigger businesses have been able to do, except to do that business, they, they spend thousands or tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of dollars on, on lawyers, you know, to get the right templates and stuff like that. What if we could just kind of take that off the table and it's like, we have that common setup. Anybody can do that for very little dollars. Mm -hmm. And what if we can set it up so those can plug into the existing legal structures? You know, um, we we have a understanding of Delaware C corps and and Wyoming crypto crypto friendly LLCs and the different kinds of um, uh, cooperatives and stuff like that they that they have in Europe. So not only do you pick a kind of an internal forum, but you also pick a way to interface with the rest of the world. Maybe it's in Wyoming, maybe it's in Finland or Estonia, maybe it's you know someplace else. Um, so the the one I, I guess both of both of these organizations envision that whole ecosystem kind of kind of coming together based on on templatizing and then providing small organizations like this. I guess another key part of it for me was David Bovell saying these organizations could be really tiny. They could be like two or three people coming together for a couple of weeks. That's you know you want to make it so easy easy, ridiculously easy um, organization forming, organizational structure, right? And ridiculously easy uh, inter-organization agreement structure. Um, so Map of the Future is working on that, um, and Lionsburg is working on that. Lionsburg has the additional thing that they've got a kind of project management backbone that they're going to let members use, and they've also got Funding structure set up for being a nonprofit, um, at least in the U.S. Uh, you can you can essentially be you can have the the donation and reporting and all that kind of stuff taken care of for a 501c3 kind of thing in a push button in a few days, and you don't have to because you become a a grantee of a larger structure that they've already built. Um, so. So now into that, I can imagine an interop team forming or multiple interop teams forming. And maybe maybe you don't write the code for Vincent for Catalyst for interop, but you can at least help Vincent write the business case for interop um, to present to his constituencies and help him write the technical plans and things mm -hmm. like that. Right. Interesting. It I wondered, are you familiar with the hollow chain and hollow sourcing projects? Yeah. Is yeah. that in that category as well? I so, I wouldn't think so. Yes, on hollow chain, but not so much on hollow sourcing. Can you explain a little bit about hollow sourcing? I cannot. I just I got <laughs> a conversation about the style of this one with someone who gave me the the conceit that this was involved in the idea of joining smaller organizations together into larger contexts. I have to hop early, but I am very interested in exactly this topic and going deeper into it. So maybe a follow up next time. Bye all. Thank you for being here. Interesting. Uh, Interesting. That looks like a good quote. Yes. Uh, apparently it comes from this person. I searched for Jordan Hall and it gave me like a sports hall. <laughs> so uh, no big the article, I guess. Um, okay, interesting. Holo sourcing. Process and protocol with different agents involved in co-creation, establish asset stewardship and valuation agreements. Right, so maybe um, market-oriented. 
Auto sourcing Google's very poorly for me. I get nada. This is 2020, the material. Yeah. And Holo Chain is another one of those communities. I mean, if you if you go look at the meta currency project before they split off Holo and all of that, they were thinking about every damned blessed one of these issues at in depth uh, for 25 years. Um, unfortunately, then the project that I first saw them building was an email client, and I'm like, why are you doing that? What you say? Uh huh. Yeah, why, why, like you're going to pry you're going to pry Gmail out of my cold dead hands. Um, but if you added a grease monkey script that did something in Gmail useful, now we're talking. But anyway, the uh, so the the challenge, um, and I've have had this discussion with both of the groups working on this ecosystem of ecosystems kind of thing. The challenge is always we interact with all the ecosystems as long as you're in our ecosystem to interoperate. So um, that's, a, that's the challenge. Um, so this is where, like, I guess my mind always goes back. I don't know if this is right at this point, but it always goes back here, which is like maybe the data formats for interop, defining the formats um, as like, you know, the, you know, like minimum, viable implementation for like interop uh, and i guess aligned to like you know what i wrote about like uh how this me align with the legislation and so on um but i don't know maybe it's just like that's how my head is shaped just because you know like <laughs> I, I wasn't gonna say it but <laughs> it's from wearing yeah. wearing the earphones for too long <laughs> yeah, I, I have the same thing i you know and that's that's where i go i think i think the secret is actually organizational structure Yes. Um, yeah. No. I. I think that's a very interesting, very interesting point. Yes. So, um, is there a way of accreting this by picking one platform that does one thing that's important that does it elegantly in a way we really like? And I'm going to say uh, uh, co co makery or something like that, that that just does one thing. You sort of log in, you get an account, you do whatever, and then figuring out where that grows to and what it does, but just, just getting something useful working across a broader community of people on distributed projects. Cause I, 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 I'm, I think, yeah, I, I, I think I like, I like where you're going with that. And I wouldn't even pick a platform having been on the horns of this dilemma. Am I doing the, the David Bovo structure or the Jordan Sukut structure? It's like, actually what you have to do is sit down with right, right now, actually, because we don't have good templates yet. Um, Linesburg is almost there. David Bovell's almost there. Comaker is almost there. Um, I think what you have to do is sit down with your 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 teammates and create your own. Actually, wait, doesn't that exacerbate the problem like crazy? Uh, because you've just gone and built yet another platform, and that's the thing we're trying to avoid. Um, I'm, I'm trying to skirt those rocks. The, yeah, that's the state of the art right now. The, the state of the art is that there isn't. It, there's a so we if have the dreams if we them. if we had an agreement on rich soil data format, meaning, hey, we leave information in tuples on GitHub repos in this sort of set, and 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 it was a really like earthy data format spec mm -hmm. that we could agree on, and then the apps could come basically lay eggs in that like like rich substrate, and anybody else could pick up the eggs and go, ooh, I'm gonna make an omelet, um, that would work. And then the platform would be indifferent, but the data would be shared and we would be okay. But Pete is nodding his head in a way that says that is not only a pipe dream, it is physically impossible because it defies not only Newtonian, but also quantum mm -hmm. and crystal physics. It's um, why the, the, the question yeah, is why do people use data formats, right? Um, because they come with tools. Uh, it's because they're, they've got an organization and they're trying to accomplish goals. So whatever, whatever structure they've got that is trying to accomplish goals is incentivized to accomplish its goals however it feels best, right? And so two teams are gonna go, they're both gonna look at that data format and go, yeah, that's great. Let's invent our own common data format and it'll be ours and we understand it much better than anybody else. Uh -huh. So data, data formats is 
funny it reminds me a little bit of wiki wikis and wiki people wiki people are always like right. but you just need a wiki for this it would work beautifully <laughs> why don't people use more wikis more I know. Right, right. Well, I, I, but maybe they, 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 it makes sense to break the problem down in, into phases, right? Like first is like the problem, which is hard enough in itself, of getting people who want to collaborate to collaborate. So like, you know, the coordination, just, just when people already agree, right? And then there's the other of like, how do you get organizations which have their own like, mainly either profit driven or you know, status seeking or just like goal oriented problems to find enough use in the common approach to actually adopt it. But it will seem to me like the first, like in the example of the wiki, right? The, the, there's a seed group maybe in the first one. Yeah. Uh, so, which is why I sort of feel like, again, like it's sort of also the, you can spot like this in, the, in many dimensions, you know, like 